Thank you. Um, Mark, um, I will give the floor to you to begin. I uh, just want to say thank you so much for having us and we're very excited to present our project, Alethea. Mark, go ahead. Begin. Yeah, thank you, Maria. And uh, uh, really honored to be here with all of you today and to uh, share at least kind of some of the things that we're doing uh, at John Jay uh, College of Criminal Justice and John Jay Research. Um, we weren't really, really talking about Project Aletheia because it was really uh, a project born out of necessity based on the viewpoint of both uh, uh, Maria and, and myself. Um, the, the, the road there uh, has been a bumpy one. Um, in, in 2002, uh, when the U.S. and our allies started gravitating towards not just coercion, but torture as, as a practice, interrogational torture as a policy, um, there was a lot of debate within the highest levels of government about the efficacy of that, uh, as well as the legality and morality uh, of that. And, and, and in my challenge, uh, of those practices um, within the Pentagon and, and elsewhere, uh, what, what I found at the time is that I did not have uh, science to effectively bolster my claims that torture would be um, not just illegal and immoral, uh, but ineffective or counterproductive. Uh, and I made those claims based on my own experience, not with torture, uh, but certainly with what building rapport and what we called relationship-based uh, uh, techniques would yield. Um, and, and my instincts, having been uh, a criminal investigator and counterintelligence professional and someone who had worked uh, counterterrorism cases since the 90s. Um, and, and what happened within the United States uh, was a, a revelation uh, much before it was publicly disclosed uh, that uh, torture and coercive practices, this family of interrogational abuses was yielding garbage, okay? It was not just ineffective, it was counterproductive. We were dedicating resources to chase ghosts things that were not there that were fabric fabricated. Uh, uh, decisions were being made based on bad information at the highest policy levels. Um, and a few people who worked for me on my behavioral science consulting team um, at the time, uh, one was named Robert Fine and another Brian Voskuel, uh, and they were commissioned while President uh, George W. Bush was still the president uh, to look at, look at this under the auspices of the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. This was looked at as a national security issue that we were not allowing decision makers to be informed about the policy decisions they were making because of the derivative product of this family of interrogational uh, uh, abuses. Um, and they wrote a report called Inducing Information uh, which showed that within the U.S. it had been approximately 50 years since there was any kind of government-sponsored research into why someone would actually give us information. Um, and then in, uh, when President uh, Obama was elected a president, he issued Executive Order 13491, which said, we do not torture, we will not torture anymore, um, but we do need to understand what the best methods are to lawfully obtain information to protect our national security. Um, and, and the High Value Detainee Interrogation Group was formed uh, with a robust research program with over, well over 100 research projects globally, unclassified, evidence-based, peer-reviewed, programs. Um, however, they were not effectively trickling down to the practitioners, nor from what I saw looking at the research, were the researchers 
effectively understanding the practice. Um, and so Project Aletheia was born um, out of frustration, out of uh, encouragement, out of a desire uh, by uh, Maria and I, who worked very closely together uh, on Hig, uh, when I was with the Hig Research Committee. Um, and I'm a, currently a visiting scholar at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, working with Maria in the, the Department of Psychology. Um, but, but we felt that there needed to be a mechanism to better bridge that gap between the science and practice of interrogation. So Maria, let me turn it over to you. Uh, I've kind of established what I view the need to be. Uh, why don't you talk about kind of where we've gone uh, in the last year? Yes, um, I will. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, it's truly an honor to work with Mark on this project. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Mark and know about Mark's great accomplishments and part of them involve building bridges between science and practice. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of slides um, to give you a sense of what uh, Project Aletheia is. Um, bear with me. Okay. So uh, this contact information is going to show up at the end of this teeny tiny slide deck. So Project Aletheia is a collaborative center for improving the science and practice of interrogation. And um, I will say that one more time, that it's about improving the science and the practice of interrogation. So um, we are looking at both elements of of the, the actors who are interested in interrogation. And I will also say here that we use the term interview and interrogation interchangeably. I know the word interrogation is off-putting to some people. We take it to be a more morally neutral term, just referring to um, a questioning uh, type setting. Now, um, who are we? So, Project Aletheia is led by uh, the executive team, which is Mark and myself, and uh, our pro project coordinator, Braden Campbell. We are supported by an advisory council uh, consisting of 11 members. I'm going to show you their names in a second. And um, a network of affiliates. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the affiliates uh, shortly. But one way to think about this, uh, rather than a traditional organizational chart, is that at the center is the um, administrative and um, leadership sort of at the center of a sort of planetary system. We have the advisory council supporting us with their expertise uh, as uh, an outer layer, and then we have uh, a whole networks of a network of affiliates drawn from two types of populations. Um, this is our advisory council. Uh, some names may be familiar to you. Um, it consists of uh, academics and practitioners um, who have in common that they um, are heavily interested in and experienced in either science or practice of interrogation or both. Um, what do we do then? What is the purpose of our project? As, as Mark said, this project is partly born out of a frustration and a sense that we can do better we currently are facing, from a research point of view, we're currently facing a lot of obstacles in terms of getting our message through to the stakeholders, if you will, the people who would benefit practically from the science that, that we have generated. Um, also, it's my firm belief that we as scientists can do better scientific research if we integrate our, if we are more integrated with the practitioner community and I think specifically in two ways. I think that um, 
research, new research questions will be stimulated by exposing ac academics to highly experienced, a breadth of experienced um, practitioners uh, who can actually point in the direction of, of the relevant research questions. Um, and also importantly, the practitioners can help the academics collect data, perhaps there are available data already in existence. Um, so the goal is really to help one another improve both the state of the science and the state of practice. So we will be completely dependent on our affiliate network. What does it mean to be a project of Aletheia affiliate? Well, the first thing to note is that it really doesn't mean that much unless you want it to. It's free to join. We don't think of it as any kind of club in any way. Uh, it's free to join. Um, and you, the activity level to which, it, to what extent you want to be engaged in helping push the frontier is up to you. Um, if you are a Project Elite affiliate, we reserve the right to ping you. Uh, for example, if we think that you might have the answer or you know somebody at, uh, who has the answer to a question that has come up. Um, but you reserve every right to say, no, I don't have time. So what you will get is access to a web platform coming to you soon in June that contains um, content. We will have uh, newsletters and live uh, events in the form of meetings, internal project Aletheia meetings, uh, invited speakers. We also will host uh, both original content and content that's curated from other sources. And importantly, there will be plenty of opportunities to make connections uh, to practitioners or on the practitioner side to scholars who study um, related manners, uh, matters. So the official website for Project Delithia, which will be our primary vehicle um, for change, is coming in June, um, first half of June. Um, if you want to sign up now for alerts uh, or even to become an affiliate, uh, please uh, check out the current website, uh, which is only a temporary placeholder until our official website is uh, up and running with all its capabilities. Or you can email the address that you see there on the screen. <laughs>